Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me for another beekeeping video. I'm David Burns, and with me today, a special guest, Eric Smith. Hi, Eric. Hi, David. Hey, good to see you. You know, we're friends. We work together at the Eastern Apicultural Society. Nice shirt that you have there representing EAS. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, David. Eric and I are master beekeepers with EAS, and I've been doing a lot of studies on varroa mites, Eric, recently in my videos. I've been showing my uh, subscribers how to do the mite test where you actually take, you know, sugar water, I mean, uh, alcohol or powdered sugar or soapy water and kind of see how many mites you have. And one of the things that I've been uh, questioning is we always take a frame out and shake it. And that way you get nurse bees off of an open brood, uh, brood frame. And then the foragers kind of fly back. And the the premise is that I've heard a lot of people say on YouTube is, and other people say that that way you actually know you have nurse bees because you don't have any uh, foragers left. They fly away and the nurse bees won't go anywhere, won't fly away. And so I thought, you know, I don't think that's actually accurate. Now, and so you're part of a listserv with me and other EAS master beekeepers. So I brought that question up to kind of like the knights of the round table, you know, all these master beekeepers that do a lot of research and such. And so it was interesting to hear what people had to say. And apparently you went out and kind of did your own study, right? Well, that's right, David. Um, I was curious to learn the answer to this question myself because yeah. Just like every other beekeeper, you're working a colony, you occasionally pull a frame out and you know, some bees fall off or take the flight. And that's always in the bin in the back of my head. Or, or are there bees yeah. in here that have never been outside or young nurse bees that maybe are not going to find their way home? And am right. I causing some kind of damage to the colony by making these bees lose their way home? So when you posted your question, that got me thinking of maybe this is something that we could test for. So uh, I devised a quick little experiment. So what I did was um, during that afternoon's mite treatments, when I shook bees off of a frame of uncapped brood, um, as is the uh, procedure, the idea being you want to get the maximum concentration of younger bees in your sample. Right. Um, what I did was then I, the container that I shook them into, I allowed it to sit for a few minutes, I actually um, timed it, it was about four minutes. And that was just about the amount of time that it took me to put the colony back together and close everything up. And there was a feeder in there that I filled at the same time. Um, I took that container of bees, that was the leftover bees that uh, were left over after doing the mite, uh, the sugar uh, roll treatment, and took them 14 feet away from the colony. 14 feet just happened to be a convenient place that I had um, a spot in my bee yard to sit the box. And what I did was then close off the entrances to the parent hive. So I put number eight harbor cloth over the entrances. This particular colony had a front and a back entrance, so I closed off both. And then I took that um, plastic box that had the bees in it and I held it way above my head and shook it as hard as I could so that the bees would be dispersed into the air rather than just falling on the ground. Wow, yeah. Um, but what I did before shaking them out was I actually marked 20 of the bees with a paint marker. So I marked 20 bees with a yellow dot on their abdomen. And then again, I shook them and then went back to the colony that has the entrances closed and just sat and watched and counted marked bees. And so I observed for 12 minutes and during that time, I collected 19 marked bees. So no of kidding. the 20 bees that I marked in the container, 19 of them made their way home. So and you were, that was, you, were, you were about 14 feet away? That's right, uh, 14 feet away. I measured the distance um, after I, I sat the container down at a convenient spot in my bee yard, grabbed the tape measure, and then and measured okay. the distance. It was 14 feet. So uh, 14 feet and 19 out of 20 made it back. And actually, uh, earlier today, I repeated the experiment on a different colony, same uh, general parameters that we talked about. But this time, I moved the bees um, 20 feet away. But this time, I moved the bees 20 feet away through a corridor of other colonies. So there can were about. Take, can you take us over there where you did that? I sure can. Take us over there. Okay. And that way you can see where you're, you did your experiment at. You've got a nice looking bee yard there, by the way. A lot Thank of you. colored paints. Wow. Oh. Okay. So I will show you the afternoons. Do you have and some bear fence up? That's right. 
I saw some bear fins. You got bears, I guess, huh? We have bears. I'm in central Pennsylvania. We have we have bears, and I've had bears visit more than once. So oh my, okay. Necessary evil here. Yeah. Um, so this colony right here on the end is the one I used. I did the experiment on today, and okay. what I did was, um, if you look down this long corridor, yeah. The um, I put the uh, container with the bees in it the whole way at the far end. So yeah. they had to fly their way back through this little bit of a labyrinth, if you will, yeah. of other colonies. And um, the reason I did that was I was curious if bees, the young bees, would just fly into any arbitrary colony, maybe the first colony yeah. that they experienced. Yeah, right. And so that's why that's why I um, that's why I tried to set an experiment that way. That's and, interesting. And yeah. this time um, I marked twenty five bees. Okay. I marked twenty five bees, and I collected eighteen. So oh. I had fewer return. However, um, I think a part of that may be because um, I stopped counting earlier than I did the first time. Oh, okay. And the, and the reason for that is that the colony that I used for the second test only had a single entrance and a single small entrance. And um, in essence, we were running into traffic jam problems. There are so many bees yeah. uh, building up on the outside of that colony of forages that were returning. It was just too crowded and I kind of oh, had I to stop looking. Yeah. Um, but definitely warrants repeating the experiment and um, collecting more data and seeing if this is a, a trend. So yeah. right now I only have two data points and that's not, a, that's not enough to draw any conclusion. No, I um, see. But it tends to support our hunch, if you will, that those bees will find their way home. Yeah, yeah. And what I, what I found, Eric, and what prompted me, so I, I shook uh, some bees off of an open brood frame, you know, and I was going to do several experiments on the same bees. And I left them in this tub as I was doing alcohol washes, powdered sugar wash, you know, just different things. And I th I just was assuming that all my nurse bees were going to stay right there in my tub, right? Wow, it didn't take, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes later, they were all gone. And then I would thought, oh, shoot, uh, did I get did I get nurse bees? Because I thought nurse bees were all going to stay in my little box here. But I was only about three to four feet away from the hive. I just set my box right next, you know, a, a hive or two over. And so when I did my research by by studying what people have done, most people in, in studies showed that nurse bees actually can be as young as three days old, and they can actually take cleansing flights. And those ten, cleansing flights can be within 10 feet uh, and they take ori orientation flights up up to day uh, they starting at day three. So mm -hmm. you have these nurse bees that you know we have this assumption oh they've never been outside the hive, they don't go flying because they're not old enough to forage, so they're not going to leave that box you shake them into. But right. quite the contrary, I think they're very familiar with the close proximity within 10, 20 feet of the hive uh, from orientation flights or are you know, defecating, flying back in, that if you take them out and do that, they're going to lift off and they possibly can fly right back in. Right. However, Eric, I feel like the majority of the nurse bees aren't like those foragers that will raise up very really quickly and then go back to the hive. I think they do kind of huddle down in the bottom of that box a little bit longer. But right. I repeated that again uh, yesterday when I was trying to do multiple studies. I put a burlap bag over that tub to hold the nurse bees in longer now, otherwise, I think they would have emptied out and gone back home. But your study really validates that by marking them like you did. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting, too, because I've been thinking about this from a different perspective for quite some time. A number of years ago, I distinctly remember the day that I lost the queen. We all have that day, right? Yeah. But when I say lost the key, the queen, I don't mean I killed her or she died. I mean, like, I lost her the way you lose your car keys. I was I was marking queens. I slipped out of my fingers and she um, dropped and um, that colony was in queenless. Um, I was surprised. I dropped her right in front of the hive entrance and she didn't make it back in. Yeah. But that got me to thinking she has never been outside of that box. She was raised in a queen castle at an out yard oh. that was moved into 10 frame equipment. And then she was moved with that colony back to the main yard. So she'd I... never been outside here, let alone know what the outside of her colony looked like so um i was thinking along those same lines with the nurse bees but i think we um as you mentioned the cleansing flights and orientation flights of the young bees really seems to be the key here and obviously okay. the queen doesn't have to 
go outside to use the bathroom by herself. That's taken care of her by her retinue. Right. Um, but yeah, um, I, I think this all is very interesting and definitely warrants some additional research and more data points to see yeah, what's yeah. really going on. Yeah. So uh, one thing I will add. Go ahead. One thing I, I just wanted to mention. One thing I did notice um, this afternoon when I was doing the second test. The bees. When I was marking the bees, I noticed several bees that had pollen in their pollen baskets clearly not nurse bees and they clearly did not fly home early as our supposition is that the older foragers will fly out of that box right away they stuck in there the whole time and were among the bees that i dumped out towards the end so definitely get a mix and definitely um, at least two bees that were older bees um, chose to hang out with their sisters in that uh, plastic tote so yeah yeah I see. Very interesting. And, you know, our study, and it, it gets really more complicated because we are wanting to take a sample of bees out of a colony that are most likely to have these heretic mites on them, the adult mites walking around on the bees that we want to sample so we can get a better data point of how many mites we have. And so the idea that we're kicking around is what what are the ages of those bees and so we feel like that if the mites are wanting to jump in at on um, this open larvae, you know, right before they're capped over, that maybe that's where we're going to find most of the mites hanging out, ready to dive in. Mm -hmm. But phoretic mites also hang out on adult bees that have fat bodies that that are plump, and they try to suck the hemolymph from these fat bodies and uh, for nourishment. So that comes into play too. Like, where are we going to find the most mites at? Are we going to find them there ready to jump in the open brood? Are we going to find them on older bees? Maybe that 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 maybe the nurse bees have those fat bodies, but maybe there's an age where they have more fat bodies that the mites detect. So that's just all up for grabs too, I guess. Yeah, for sure. So I, yeah, I think, uh, right, yeah, right now, I think the best thing we have going is that open brood. That's, you know, you're not going to find many mites, I don't think, that are going to be up in a, on bees that are foragers up in the honey super because mites are kind of the parasites that are wanting to be uh, reproductive around that open brood area. Yeah. So right now, I think this is the best way to do it. Scooping up bees, dump them in a frame. Now I've used to take frames and actually hold them sideways and then rake my jar down it. Have you done that before? I have, yes. And the bees kind of fall in and that way you don't have to shake them out. And that seems to work pretty good for me as well. Yeah. But it seems like right now people are liking the idea of dumping them in the bucket. It's just another step. Yeah, I've found that it, at least in my own experience, it's easier to get the bees into the jar quickly and the cap on when you dump them into a container first. And then you can yeah, it, it take is. them to one corner and do the scooping. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the sort of gentle scraping down the um, yeah, right. face of the comb works well, too. Yeah. In, in the in the days of I don't know many years ago I used to take uh, paper or sometimes metal like metal flasking or something and I would shake a frame onto this metal and it was kind of kind of a V shaped and I would then shake the V uh, down into the jar you know right and we're all finding these different ways and more productive ways to do it but are you uh, when you do your uh, test for mites are you doing alcohol wash or are you doing powdered sugar uh, generally do alcohol covered that on your channel so i don't need to get into the yeah yeah, <laughs> the right. why. yeah. yeah if nobody's there no one know what we're talking about i've done some videos recently kind of comparing alcohol wash versus powdered sugar yeah. and uh one study one thing that i did it showed that oh my alcohol was better another one it was kind of close i only gained two more i think by doing an alcohol wash so kind of up in the air too um i'm doing some experiment too with some alcohol gel uh kind of a, it's a little more thicker and i I, I'm wanting to experiment with that. Oh, interesting. Like a yeah. hand sanitizer? It is exactly or... what it is. And okay. I did it kind of serendipity because I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm out of alcohol. Oh, wait a minute. I got this gallon of the hand gel, you know? So I started I using I started using it and it had real good results on getting mites. Oh, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to take, you know, our, our thoughts here is dump a bunch of bees that have likely the same amount of mites on them from the same frame. And then I can do similar studies, you know, like, okay, I'm going to try just 90% alcohol versus the thicker gel hand sanitizer. And right now, everybody wants me to do Dawn Ultimate Dish Soap. That's a big thing now. 
Do the okay. Dom dish soap. It works better than alcohol and it's cheaper. Okay. I'm interested. I'll be looking forward to your uh, results on that. I've tried that and it, I always had trouble with the suds getting in oh, the yeah. way of counting yeah. the mites. I've been mixing the water a little bit at, uh, the night before, but I'll tell you, I did a study oh, yesterday and it was interesting because I, I got all the mites off of, of, um, must, oh, it was an alcohol wash. And so I wanted to see if I get any more mites off by doing the, um, soap wash the soap rinse and so i thought wait a minute let me first just do a water rinse right so i rinse with water i got one more mite off by rinsing right. with water so then i did the soap after the water rinse and i got one more mite off with the soap again okay i don't really think that you're going to get a difference on the mite drop using dawn versus alcohol yeah, it seems to me probably it's a liquid versus no liquid situation, yeah, but yeah, exactly. definitely interested in the results to see okay, what yeah, the data that's shows. Right. Absolutely. Well, Eric, it's been great having you on uh, the show to, today. And boy, well, you, thanks, David, for the invitation. Yeah, you know, I really appreciate you going out to the yard and, and taking time to do a study like that. It, it is kind of eye opening because we were we were you know, not really realizing we were misleading people to, they were all thinking that nurse bees can't fly. They can't fly back, you know, and uh, we've kind of disproven that they indeed can fly. Yeah. They do find their way back. What a neat study too, that you took them and made them fly through all these hives that they could go into any of these hives. And they mostly went back to their hive. Yeah. My, um, my mentor, he, he would always say, don't worry about it. The bees will find their way home or they'll, they'll go into another colony. So that was in the back of my head, the uh, possibility of the bees drifting home yeah. to a new home. So right. I wanted to test that as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's very good. Well, thanks a lot. Eric, I got to thank you again for helping us out at EAS with the field study. Man, you were great. Uh, testing. That's my pleasure. Oh, yeah. Testing uh, master beekeeper candidates in the field. Very good job doing that. So we had thank a lot you, of fun at EAS. Yep. We Look sure forward. did. Yeah, look forward to seeing you again. Absolutely. Anything else you want to share with our audience? Tell them about any website or if they want to contact you or anything. Um, if they want to check out my website, it's apisresearch.org. Um, and there you will find some information that I shared at EAS this year. Um, I gave a talk about uh, 3D printing for beekeepers. So there yeah. are 10 models out there, beekeeping tools that are free that you can download and, and print out at home if you have a 3D printer and uh, save yourself a trip to the uh, the bee store. Yeah, I attended that I attended that workshop. You did a great job. That was enjoyable. Thanks, David. Good ideas too. Appreciate All right, Eric. Thank you. Hey, I'll I'll let you go and uh, see you next time at EAS. Take care, David. We'll talk okay. soon. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.